everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we have been working on a garden harvest of our butternut squash. Some people refer to it as winter squash. It is time to get these chopped up and it is a daunting task. Let me tell you some tips and tricks to help you get yours chopped up and freezer or canning ready. So one thing to know when you are ready to cut these, these stems have a lot of little pokies on them that really hurt your hands. I like to get that snapped off and I always cut mine with loppers out in the garden and leave this end piece on. If you cut the end piece off or snap it off of the vine, you will actually start to get oh, rot in the upper part. So you want to leave a couple of inches of a stem every time you do a harvest. So now that we're ready to work on it, I protect my hand with my oven mitt Gloved hands work fine too. And I just pry that off. Now getting them cut is a whole nother story. A nice sharp chef's knife is what you really need. But it's not going to cut through this. It's not soft skinned like a watermelon. It is very, very tough skinned. And it's hard to do. So you could pre-cook this in the oven. I don't want to have my oven on that whole time, paying the electric company for the power to get this started. So here's an ingenious method. You fill your sinks and let your squash sit in there with some hot water. Now, you can see the steam coming off here. I've actually got another pot of boiled water ready to go in. Now, if your squash is small, you can stick it right in the pot these are way too large. You see they take up the whole sink. These are about 12 to 18 inches long and they're probably 4 to 6 inches around. So I'm just going to add some more boiling water to this and because these are a cylinder shaped squash I don't have to flip them over And if you're more comfortable, you can wear gloves doing this because you don't want to hurt yourself. So with gloved hands, you can rotate them over. And it's best to let these set here anywhere from three to five minutes. And the seeds are down on this end, so of course it's wanting to float. So you can just rotate it around. I've got one more I need to make room for in here. And you can change your water out and add more boiling hot water if you find that this is not cutting well for you. Just put it back in and add some more water. Now some different options are this style of cutting knife. I use this one for chopping and mincing mostly. I have a bread knife that I like to use on melons and it won't cut through this at all. The steak knife just flexed and flexed. A drywall knife or a pruning saw works really well. This is a small drywall knife that I've got. I've got a wood handled one that I may have to resort to. Let's see how this works. All right, I tried one out and it cut real nice. So let me show you what a nice trick that was to get it cut. Now I've still got my gloves on because the water's quite hot still, but look at how this cuts. The sharp tip of my knife would not even go through that before. Now I'll save this for the chickens or the pigs, so I've got a nice scrap bowl sitting over here. And these seeds, you can wash them and save them for seed planting for next year's garden. Take the seeds from your largest, best squash. Those are the genetics that you want to save and to plant in your garden again next year. So I can wash these off and we can toast them and it's just like roasted pumpkin seeds. They are delicious. They are also very high in zinc. Super, super good rev up for your immune system. Yeah. 
So we're gonna yeah. just scoop these out, and we're gonna save some for us, and we're gonna give some to the chickens. <laughs> winter squash, your butternut squash, your acorn squash, any hard skinned squash. Save yourself a trip to the hospital of getting cut. Use caution always when you're cutting this. And I hope this helps you. Hit the like button if you did. Share it with a friend because everyone is harvesting their gardens right now. We'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.